In this video, I'll answer the question, which is better, selling put options or selling covered calls? As you can see here, 53% of you said that selling covered call options is better, 36% said that selling put options is better, and 7% said that they are the exact same thing. What if I told you that you're all right? Well, kind of. Let me show you what I mean. Selling put and cover call options are two of my favorite trading strategies. So which is better? Let's look at an example here to answer that question. Here you see one of the most popular stocks being traded in right now, which is Apple. Here are the put and call options that expire in 21 days on September 17th. Let's say that you believe that Apple would either go up in value or at worst, stay right where it's at now. So you decide to sell an option that will pay you the most time value premium possible. Since Apple is trading at $148.61, if we're going to sell a put option, we would sell the 148 put option. As you can see here, you would receive right at $2.36 per share for that. But what if you're one of the 53% of traders that responded to my poll by saying that you believe that selling covered calls is better? Is it better in this scenario? Let's do some simple math and figure it out. And don't worry, I've done the math for you. If we sell that exact same 148 covered call option, since Apple's trading at 148.61, that option is 61 cents in the money. Notice that the 148 call option is selling for $3.02 per share. But remember that it's 61 cents in the money. So in order to figure out how much time value premium is in this option, we need to back out how much this option is currently in the money right now. So it's selling for $3.02 per share. It's currently 61 cents in the money. So that leaves us $2.41 per share of time value premium in this covered call option. Now remember that the same strike price put option was selling for $2.36 per share. As you can see here, we actually get five more cents per share to do a covered call option versus selling a put option. How much of a difference is that in the overall big picture? Well, it's just over 2%. So if you're going to make, say, 10,000 profit this year by selling options, according to this example, you're missing out on about $200 worth of profit if you're selling put options versus if you were selling covered call options. Okay, so look at a stock that the market is bullish on. Let's check out a stock that the market is bearish on. Because the argument you could make is, since people are more bullish on Apple, they're willing to pay a little bit more for a call option because they expect it to go up more than they expect it to go down. So let's look at a stock that's going down. Here you see a stock that we've done a lot of trades in this year and made a lot of money off of, and that's Pfizer. As you can see, Pfizer is currently trading at $46.62 per share. The closest strike price is just below that at 46 and a half. Notice that if we were to sell the 46 and a half put option, we'd expect to get right at $1.07 per share. Now let's look at how much we would pocket if we did a covered call at that same strike price. Here you see that call option is selling for right at $1.21 per share. If we back out how much the call option is in the money, which is 12 and a half cents, we see that again, we get slightly more premium for doing a covered call option. We get $1.09 per share versus $1.07.5 per share. That's right at 1.4% more option premium for doing the covered call. Why do we consistently get a little more option premium for doing covered calls than for doing puts? Maybe it's because you're required to buy the stock outright in the case of a covered call. So maybe it's for interest that you're giving up, or maybe it's because the market is overall bullish right now. And as a result, calls are more in demand. Either way, as we have seen, you get paid a little bit more for doing a covered call than for selling a put option. So which is better? In just a minute, I'm going to talk through every claim and myth I can think of when it comes to put and covered call options to analyze it from every angle. I think you're going to find it pretty interesting. But before we do that, we need to consider more factors than just the premium. For example, let's say that you don't have the cash available to buy the stock outright to do a covered call option but you still want to trade in options. In that case, obviously, selling put options will be better for you if you are willing to use margin. Now you need to be careful of margin because it can go both ways. It can be great when a trade goes in your favor, but it can be very painful when a trade goes against you. And that little piece of knowledge, unfortunately, comes from personal experience. If you use too much margin, it can even put you right out of the trading business. But let's say that you're going to use margin appropriately, and you're going to make well thought out smart trades. If you don't have the ability to buy 100 shares, then as you have seen, selling put options can give you almost as good of a return as covered call options. Now let's talk through some of the very popular claims and even some myths that I've seen here on YouTube and in other places that are touted as facts when it comes to option trading. For example, what about stock appreciation? I know some of you like to sell covered call options that are out of the money, but you also want to benefit from the stock's appreciation. Aren't covered call options better for that? Let's look at another example. Let's go back to our Apple stock. Let's say that you expect Apple to be at 152.5 by September 17th. Wouldn't it be better off doing a covered call option? I literally just watched a YouTuber that's very popular make that claim. No names here, but take my word for it. As you can see here, we can buy the stock outright for $148.61 and then sell a 152.5 strike covered call option for right at $1.20 per share. Would we be better off doing a covered call or selling a put option here? Let's don't jump to conclusions, let's run the numbers. 
So we'd get $1.20 per share for selling the call option. We'd also have stock appreciation of about $3.90 per share, or the difference between 152 and a half and what the stock is currently trading at, 148 and 61 cents. So if Apple made it to that strike price or higher, in all, we'd have a gain of $5.08 per share. What about if we sold a put option at that same strike price? How much would we make if Apple made it to 152 and a half or higher? Notice that the bid is $5 and the ask is $5.05 per share. If we went in the middle, we'd expect to sell this put option for about $5.02 per share. In this scenario, you also come out ahead by doing a call option, but only by six cents. As you can see, you can make almost as much by selling the same strike put option as you can doing a covered call option. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just shared with you, then I would love it if you just give this video a like, just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. Let's tackle another theory here. As you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I love trading in dividend paying stocks. What about if we did a covered call on a stock that was about to go ex-dividend? And remember, you can't be paid for a dividend unless you own that stock on the ex-dividend date. So will we come out ahead by doing a covered call instead of selling a put option on a stock that's about to go ex-dividend? It just so happens that we sold a put option today in Kimberly Clark, ticker symbol KMB. Kimberly Clark actually goes ex dividend before our put option expires. Would it have been better for us to do a covered call option instead of selling a put option? Here you see the trade we did. We sold one contract of the Kimberly Clark September 17th, 135 put options and were paid $1.90 per share. Kimberly Clark actually went up in price a little bit after we did this trade. So you can see here, now the market is closed. The bid for that same put option is $1.70 per share and the ask is $1.85 per share. So let's go in the middle and say that we could get about $1.77 per share for selling this put option. Notice if we had done a covered call option, would have been paid right at $2.30 per share for that same 135 strike price call option. If we did that covered call, that 135 strike option would be $1.35 in the money. So in order to figure out how much time value we'd have received for selling this call option, we need to take out that $1.35 from the $2.30 that the option is currently trading for. As you can see, at least $0.95 cents per share and time value premium that the covered call option would pay us if we did that trade. Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? We have $0.95 cents per share and time value premium in the covered call option. However, the put option is showing $1.77 per share in time value premium. What's going on here? Shouldn't the time value premium of each side, the put versus the call be the same or pretty close to it if it's the same strike price? The answer is typically yes. I've alluded to that in some of my videos. If you have an option that's in the money and want to see how much time value is left in that option, you can quickly look at the corresponding put or call option at the same strike price that's out of the money. And it'll give you a quick estimate of how much time value is left in that option. So why is it off by 82 cents? The answer is that Kimba Clark is about to go ex-dividend, as you can see here on September 9th. And that dividend will be a dollar of 14 cents per share. The reason why the time value is different in these two options is because when Kimberly Clark goes ex dividend on September 9th, the price of that stock should drop at least initially by the amount of that dividend. Now we'll move around up and down throughout the day, but initially the stock should drop by that dividend amount on the ex dividend date. The reason that the company is giving away that money to its investors. So it will literally be worth $1.14 per share less than it was the day before. And you and I, the people that own the stock will be worth $1.14 more because we received that dividend. That expected drop in price is priced into the put option when a stock is about to go ex-dividend. As you're going to see in our next example, as the ex-dividend date nears, that dividend amount becomes more and more accurately priced in the price of a put option. Let me show you one more example of trading put and call options around the ex-dividend date so you can see what happens as the ex-dividend date nears. CBOE Global Markets is about to go ex-dividend on August 30th, which is in three days. Notice that the dividend here is 48 cents per share. Let's see if that expected drop in stock price is priced into the put options. Let's say that we did a covered call and naked put at the 126 strike price. As you can see here, if you go in the middle of the 105 and 135 bid and ask on the call option, we expect to sell that call option for about $1.20 per share. Now let's look at the put option. The bid is at 220 and the ask at 245. So if we go in the middle of that, it's at $2.32.5 per share. And we need to back out how much this option is in the money. It's currently trading at $125.30 and our strike is at 126. So this option is right at 70 cents per share in the money. If you back out what we expect to sell this option for, which is $2.32 per share, we see that there's $1.62 per share in time value premium in it. Compare that with what the call option would sell for at $1.26 per share, and the difference is $0.42 cents per share. Notice what the dividend is. The dividend is $0.48 cents per share. So we're only $0.06 cents off. Do you see how the put option already reflects the fact that the stock is going to drop on the ex-dividend date, which is in three days? Two of those days is actually the weekend because it's Friday today. So as you can see, 42 of the 48 cent dividend were priced into this put option when the market closed today. 
So in theory, if the put option is priced pretty close to what it should be, you actually collect that dividend early by selling a put option. As you can see, it's probably not penny for penny what you receive if you own the stock outright, but it sure isn't very far off. Basically, when you sell a put in a stock that's about to go X dividend, you're paid for its expected price drop or you're compensated for that dividend up front. Let's talk through another scenario I hear on YouTube and then talking to traders when they say that either covered calls or selling puts is better than the other one. For example, one of the common conversations I hear is that you sell put options to buy a stock at a discount. Hmm, what do you think? Let's talk through that. Let's go back to our Apple example. Let's say that we wanted to buy Apple at a discount. For this example, let's say that we wanted to buy it here at the strike price of $144 per share. Well, the argument typically goes that I'll just sell a put option and wait for the stock to be put into my account. And if it's not, then I'll sell another put option until it is. And I like that argument. Remember, I like selling put options. It's my number one favorite trading strategy. But let's do the math here. So as you can see, if we sold the September 17th $144 put option, we expect to get right at $1.12 per share. Well, could we do a covered call and buy at that exact same price, $144 per share? The answer is yes. All we have to do is buy the stock outright at what it's selling for right now, $148.61 per share, and simultaneously sell that same strike price call option, the $144 call option. Let's see if the math works out. So we pay $148.61 per share for the stock, but then we simultaneously sell the in the money covered call option at the $144 strike price. If we go in the middle, the bid and the ask, we expect the call option to sell for right at $5.80 per share. That would put the cost of buying the stock at $142.81 one cents per share. Remember, if we sold that 144 put option, we receive $1.12 per share. So if the stock were put into our account at $144, if you back out how much we receive for that put option, which is $1.12 per share, our cost basis would be $142.88 per share. That's actually seven cents per share more than what it would cost us if we did the covered call at the same strike price of $144. Again, another misconception blown out of the water here. So let's answer this question once and for all. Which is better? Covered calls or selling naked puts? Let me tell you, I prefer selling naked put options. The reason for that is I just like to have that cash sitting around available to me just in case I need it. We almost never use margin, but it's nice to have that cash sitting there so if we decide to use margin, we can do it pretty easily. The other reason why I prefer selling naked put options over doing all covered calls is that I like to have my cash split up into multiple accounts. I don't want to have all my cash or positions in one brokerage. It just gives me a little bit of protection in case the broker went belly up or decided to make some rule that wouldn't allow us to pull all of our cash out at any moment when we needed it most. Mainly for those two reasons, I prefer to sell put options. However, if you watch my channel, you know that I also don't mind doing covered call options. It's my second favorite trading strategy. And it's not second by very much. However, if you don't want to own stock or if you don't have the ability to own stock outright because you don't have enough cash, but you still want to trade using options, selling put options might be the way to go. If you have the cash set aside like we do to cover all the put options that we've sold 100% without using margin, as you've seen, covered calls can actually edge out selling puts. But really it comes down to running the math. If you want to try and make an extra 1% or 2%, then you need to run the math on every single trade. But doing that can be kind of challenging because those numbers change really fast and where you get filled out on order, that alone might vary by 1% or 2%. So in my opinion, the two strategies are pretty much equal. I do believe if you do a covered call on a dividend paying stock, as you've seen, you do come out slightly ahead if the stock is not caught away from you before the ex-dividend date. Otherwise, what I've seen is pretty much a toss up. But what do you think? Please let me know down in the comments below. If you'd like to receive alerts as soon as we make option trades, similar to the trades I showed in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more of our secret tips and tricks on how to trade options to generate awesome cash flow in return, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Trade Options Like a Pro. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.